Okay, so uh, when you use Kubernetes, you may have some terms like API gateways, Kubernetes gateways, and service Office service matrices, and um, but it will confusing, right? So uh, in this session, uh, Navindu uh, will share how to distinguish these uh, terms, and let's welcome to Navindu. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, uh, thank you for having me. And uh, I guess you already know about API gateways now because because of the last session. Yeah. So, probably I'll help you clear b a bit more about Kubernetes gateways and service meshes and how they are different from API gateways. And uh, I mentioned comprehensive. Comprehensive means complete. But I don't know if you can, if you can learn about this completely in 30 minutes. But let's try, right? Okay. So a little bit about me. I'm a maintainer of Apache API 6, which is an API gateway. And uh, I worked on some CNCF projects. So this is the CNCF group, and like you, you, you all know. So I worked on some service mesh projects. And I'm also a Google Summer of Code and LFX mentor, so I try to help new contributors in open source. You can find me on Twitter or X. Yeah. <laughs> so, why are we confused? Uh, like, uh, um, is the mic working? I'm not sure. Is it working? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, w why are we confused? So just like this slide, it is confusing what is API gateway, what is Kubernetes gateway, and what is service mesh. So let's make this slide less confusing. So the first point is all of these three technologies, they use the same keywords. So canary deployments, rate limiting, service discovery, like all of these, all of these tools does that. All of these tools use reverse proxies. So like the last speaker said, they use Nginx. So similarly, service meshes uses reverse proxies. And Kubernetes gateways also use reverse proxies. And API gateways have Kubernetes gateways. And API gateways have service meshes. Some service meshes have their own API gateways and all sort of stuff. So it's confusing. And there are a lot of articles and a lot of videos from these influencers which compare service meshes and uh, API gateways and Kubernetes gateways, and they say which one is better than the other, but that is completely wrong. So in this talk, uh, I wanted to share uh, what all of these are and why you should be using them or why you shouldn't be using them. So both cases, I guess. OK, so API gateways, basically, they are just reverse proxies with a lot of capabilities. That's it. It's a reverse proxy. It can serve your application, but it has a lot of features. So it, it sits, sits between your client applications. So let's say mobile apps or like web apps or anything, and your backend, which is your APIs. And it accepts client requests, forwards them to the APIs, forwards them to the backend APIs, and returns the response back to the client. That's the basic function, and it does a lot of stuff on top of it, as, as as mentioned in the previous talk, so it, it does uh, observability, it does traffic control, it does authentication, security, all sort of stuff. So a reverse proxy with a lot of capabilities. So this is basically what an API gateway architecture would look like. So you have your client applications, you have your API, and the API gateway uh, accept all all traffic and then forwards it to your backend application. And it does all of these functions. So I work, I work on Apache API 6, which is an open source API gateway hosted by the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, and there are other open source API gateways as well, like the gentleman before me mentioned, Kong. There is also a project called Glue and uh, Tyke. But there is also proprietary stuff from the major cloud providers. So AWS has their own API gateway, which is completely proprietary, but like people still use it. So 
canary deployments so we first mentioned that all all, all the three things api gateways kubernetes gateways and service meshes can do canary deployments so let's look into that and uh, see see what it is about so a canary deployment is basically rolling out uh, a so your software to a small sub subset of users first just so that you can test it out and then making it generally uh, generally available so initially here uh, you have your v1.0 and you just released v2.0 but you are not sure if it is bug free you just want to test it so first you will use a g api gateway like apache api 6 to route most traffic to your first version and just a small amount of traffic to the second version and gradually as you are as you test test out this new version you can reconfigure api 6 to route all traffic to this version so this is what a canary uh, deployment looks like for an api gateway so let's move on to kubernetes gateways so api gateways and kubernetes gateways sound similar the only difference is that api kubernetes gateways are api gateways which is deployed in kubernetes that's it so you can use uh, kubernetes api to configure these api gateways so you deploy an api gateway in kubernetes and you you, you use the kubectl commands like you configure a pod or a service and you use that to configure the api gateway that's the only uh, difference here so to work with kubernetes gateways uh, kubernetes provides two apis the first one is the ingress api this is the uh, existing api it is part of the kubernetes release it is uh, generally available and there is this new api called the gateway api which aims to solve a lot of problems with the ingress api uh, so these two apis lets you configure a kubernetes gateway within kubernetes okay so we talked about apis clients and everything right now we moved in, moved to the kubernetes world now your apis are pods and services in a cluster so that's that's the change here so instead of your apis uh, being separate it is now deployed in a kubernetes cluster and you have an ingress or a gateway in front of your apis which is sending traffic to your apis does that make sense yeah okay so you have two options either the ingress api or the gateway api the rest of the stuff remains the same everything is deployed in kubernetes so so i mentioned api gate kubernetes gateways are just api gateways in kubernetes so the way it works with apache api 6 the, the api gateway we talked about is that it deploys api 6 in kubernetes then it's then it adds another layer on top of it so api 6 ingress controller is another layer on top of api 6 uh, kind of like a wrapper on api 6 that lets it uh, that that translates kubernetes configuration into api 6 configuration so you are a kubernetes user you will use kubernetes configuration to configure your api gateway and the ingress controller converts it to api 6 configuration so the rest of the stuff remains the same it works similar to out of kubernetes but now you can use a kubectl command to uh, configure the gateway so a kubernetes gateway now becomes an api gateway plus an ingress controller and that is how most projects work uh, yeah so yeah so like i mentioned the ingress controller the ingress controller basically takes in the yaml file the kubernetes yaml file which is defined using the kubernetes ingress api or the gateway api and then converts it uh, then converts it to the uh, api 6 configuration uh, let me just show you a demo All right. 
Okay, uh, I hope you can see the JSON file here, right? Okay. So this is the, this is a Canary deployment configuration of API 6 when API 6 is deployed outside a Kubernetes cluster. So it's pretty basic. You configure a route. Uh, so when requests come to this route, API 6 will route it to your backend services. So basically, you have uh, a backend service. And you are uh, sending 95% of the request to one service and 5% to another service, which is the V2 service. Pretty, ba pretty simple, right? Now, if we move to the Kubernetes stuff, it remains the same. All of the configuration remains the same, but now you are writing a YAML file. So it's, it's, of, it's of kind ingress. So like I mentioned, ingress is generally available in Kubernetes releases. So you can use this API, and uh, yeah, and and just uh, configure uh, configure the Canary release here. So to configure Canary release, it's a bit different with the Ingress API because Ingress API is pretty much limited. So you have to use custom annotations, like like the ones mentioned here. So you mention that uh, you need a Canary annotation. And you say you say you want to re you want to make it a canary release, and you want to set the weight to five, so only route five percent. But annotations are like really messy. If you want to do more complex stuff, you end up adding a lot of annotations. So, so what happened was uh, companies or like projects they created their own CRDs, they created their own Kubernetes custom custom resources to overcome this. So API 6 has this uh, CRD called API 6 route, which lets you define API 6 configuration uh, in Kubernetes. So when you look at this configuration, it looks much similar to what we had here, right? So it, it is much more human readable. It, it is much more maintainable. And it's much more like, like as soon as you see it, you can figure out what is happening with this. And you don't need any custom annotations. So that's the Kubernetes CRDs. But the main problem here is that uh, API 6 route is specific to API 6. So if you want to change to, let's say, Kong, if you want to use Kong API Gateway or Nginx API, Nginx Ingress, this configuration will not work. So but with Ingress, whatever its limitations, it, w it will work with any other, uh, it is portable. So it, it doesn't depend on API 6 at all. But when you, when you come to CRDs, it, 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 it adds that dependence. All right. So yes. Uh, okay, wait. <laughs> okay, so it, it adds that uh, uh, dependence, but now when we now we move to the gateway API, which is the new API that we talked about, uh, which is with, which has the goal to like eliminate the problems faced by the Ingress API. So in the Ingress API, we had these annotations. We solved it using custom resources. But the Gateway API uh, tries to accommodate all of that uh, in the Kubernetes spec itself. So instead of relying on custom CRDs, you can just define this stuff uh, as, you would, uh, as, you would native, uh, as you would for any other uh, implementation of the Gateway API. So so you can use this configuration for API 6. You can use this co same configuration for Kong. You can use the same configuration for Nginx. So you can basically replace your implementation, replace the uh, uh, tool you use, but you can have the same configuration. All right, so it, it looks much similar to uh, our CRDs. And that is because a lot of these projects, they came together and they are designing this new gateway API. So uh, they are figuring out what went wrong with the Ingress API, the limitations of the Ingress API. And now they are uh, 
building a better API. Uh, API, but it is still in alpha releases. It is not uh, available out of the box in Kubernetes. You have to manually install it, and a lot of stu lot of the stuff is still experimental. But it is the it, it, it is the future. All right. So now let's come to service meshes. So both API gateways and Kubernetes gateways had a lot of similarities as we discovered. They work across application boundaries. So they, they handled north-south traffic. Uh, but service meshes do something different. They are concerned about inter-service uh, communication, which is between each service. That is called east-west traffic. So an API gateway and Kubernetes gateway did north-south traffic. But uh, a service mesh does east-west traffic control. So how, how this does traditionally is by using a sidecar proxy. So this also use proxies. And each of your API, each of your service, each of your service deployed in Kubernetes has its own sidecar container. And instead of these services communicating with each other directly and the application developer having to like uh, configure that uh, communication uh, himself, we will use a reverse proxy. And this set of reverse proxies is called a service mesh. And there is a service mesh control plane that, that does all the networking for you. So you just deploy your application and uh, you, in you deploy it on top of a service mesh and it will handle all the networking for you. So there are a lot of popular service meshes. Istio is the most popular service mesh out there. Then you also have uh, Console from HashiCorp and Linkerty, which is like uh, one of the best uh, open source projects. But uh, Istio recently like joined the CNCF, and it recently graduated. So yeah, most of the service mesh, use, service mesh users out there use Istio. But there is also like a new technology called uh, uh, relatively old technology, but something that had its resurgence recently called eBPF. So eBPF lets you do stuff on the kernel easily. And this has, this has given a lot of uh, new projects, and one of which is called Cilium. It's a new type of service mesh. So instead of each of your service having a sidecar proxy, an, EBP, an EBPF service mesh will have just one proxy for one one node or like any other like uh, any other grouping. So inst instead of ha having to uh, deploy all these reverse proxies, you just deploy one, and each of these each of your service will talk to this uh, service mesh through the kernel. So it it makes a lot of uh, performance improvements. It makes it a uh, uh, like it, it 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 removes a lot of load from the uh, service mesh that is uh, that is seen in traditional service mesh architectures. So this is also happening right now. But uh, uh, we'll, we we have to wait and see what what the future of this would be would look like. So the now adding to the confusion, you can also do something like this. You can combine service mesh and gateways. So. Uh, we, we are trying to be less confused, now we are more confused. So you can have your service mesh for east-west traffic. So the red ones are service mesh. But you can also deploy gateways that handle north-south traffic as well. So you can get the best of both worlds. Uh, so, so you can use a powerful API gateway like API 6 to manage traffic uh, northwest, tra northwest, traf northwest traffic, sorry, north south traffic, and then uh, you can use a powerful service mesh like Istio to handle your east west traffic. So that makes the system much more efficient. But it's it's the question of whether like whether you should do it because just because you can do something doesn't mean you you should do it, right? So yeah. All right. Now let's look at a canary deployment in a service mesh. So instead of uh, client uh, uh, like uh, load balancing clients between multiple services, in a service mesh you can do something like this. So one service can uh, 
one service can split requests between two other services. So similar to what we'd uh, seen before, like uh, you can initially send most traffic to one service and then uh, then gradually switch switch it to the next service. And you can do it anywhere in your service. So when, we, when you were using an API gateway, you were limited to the application boundary, but now you can do it anywhere in your, in, in your architecture. And there is this project, there was this project called Service Mesh Interface, SMI. Uh, there is no E, I, 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 may, I think I made a typo, but yeah. So it, it, try, it tries to make Service Mesh uh, vendor agnostic. So you can define one configuration file and, and the goal of the project was to like use the same configuration for multiple service meshes. But only a few projects participated in this, uh, few service meshes participated in this project and it was basically a failure. But now what is happening is the gateway API project, the Kubernetes gateway API project, which we just saw, they are also integrating service mesh they are also integrating service mesh su support to the API and this and it is done through this gamma initiative so you can also use the kubernetes gateway API to manage service meshes as well so now you can take one API the gateway API use it to manage your API gateways within kubernetes and your service meshes and istio the most popular service mesh they plan to use the gateway API as the default API in the future they had they have already announced this and they have a lot of documentation about this and this makes this makes it much easier for us users we, we can just uh, we can just uh, work on this gateway api and uh, like the rest of the infrastructure is uh, doesn't matter to us and the service mesh in, uh, initiative project which which recently failed they they also joined the gamma initiative so now everything is coming together. And the gateway API for service mesh also supports canary deployments. So people will keep saying that. <laughs> so what should you use? That's the question, right? We talked about uh, all of these stuff. We talked about uh, how they are different. We taught, talked about how they are similar. We talked about how they can work together. So what should you use? And the correct answer is it depends. But it depends on you. It depends on who you are. Uh, it depends on what you are trying to do. So most of the times when you're working on a small application, you won't need an API gateway. You won't need a service mesh. You won't need nothing. You just need to deploy it in some uh, server, some bare metal server running, uh, r running an Apache proxy, and then just basically, yeah, s send it, send request to the server. But when you are trying to uh, uh, like when you when when you want more capabilities within your service like when you want more networking capabilities when you want more observability within your service when you want more fine grain traffic control within your services then it might make sense for you to use a service mesh but otherwise if you are deploying uh, services within a kubernetes cluster and you just want uh, some basic traffic control you just want to do some distributed tracing you want to add authentication to your services. You want to add traffic, basic traffic control in front of your services. That's when you use the uh, gateway API or the ingress API with an ingress controller implementation. And if you are using, uh, if you are not using Kubernetes, if you are just deploying it uh, uh, outside, if, if you are not using any clusters, you can use an API gateway and it will still work the same. You, you don't have to use Kubernetes to get all of these routing features, all of these uh, observ ob observability features. Uh, you can use it without Kubernetes as well. So the key here was to like introduce you to these topics. I, I, I assume that you will have a lot of questions. I assume that you will have uh, a lot of stuff that might might have went over your head. Yeah, like. But the key idea was to like introduce all of these. I I think uh, I think I was able to do that. But uh, there there is also stuff you can read afterwards. So there is this article I wrote uh, a while ago, which 
which is basically the uh, the article version of this talk but it goes into more details about uh, what these are and like uh, it, it 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 also goes into some configuration aspects so it it is a bit more in detail and there is also a simplified chinese translation for the article so you can also try that and uh, if you have any questions now feel free to ask them i will be happy to answer and you can scan this qr code to access the article so yeah thank you and i open the floor for questions so uh, anyone have any questions Okay. Yeah, I have a question for the ISTO migration. So I want to know. Uh, as you mentioned, that the ISTO web search will support the API for API. Yeah. So if I'm a current user, if I want to upgrade my ISTO, should I do the NDC manually or the ISTO will Yeah, like uh, from what I understand from Istio statement, they will use it as the gateway API as the default API, but they will still support uh, virtual services, Istio virtual service. So if you are using Istio virtual service, it will still work. You won't need to be migrate to gateway API, but like it might make sense to migrate if you are planning to like switch Istio with some other service mesh, maybe. So if you use the gateway API, you don't have to worry about. Uh, changing configuration in the future. From from the service mesh projects that use eBPF, uh, the way it works is one node will have a reverse proxy. So instead of each service, each pod having a, a reverse proxy, one node will have a reverse proxy, and uh, inter-node communications will be through these reverse proxies, similar to how traditional service meshes work. But within a node, it uh, that shares the kernel, it will communicate through the kernel. So that is. That is the design, I, I guess, right now. Sorry. Yeah. So when a service uh, talks to another service, instead of going through the reverse proxy, it, it goes through the kernel. So a lot of a lot of request latency is avoided. A lot of like uh, other bottlenecks that comes with using a proxy is avoided. So it's much faster. Uh, it lets you do more stuff like uh, within the kernel itself. So I mean like things like uh, better observability, like better traffic control, all sort of stuff. So yeah, that's the advantage you get. But yeah, like for the first question, like if you are using internode communication, then you might need to use uh, a reverse proxy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? EBPF. Oh yeah. Yes, uh, there are a lot of projects that does uh, this observability stuff with EBPF. From what I understand, like it 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 is more granular. It is more. It is much better than what solutions we have. So traditionally, when we look into Kubernetes, we we and, and talk about observability, we say things like uh, Prometheus, that sort of stuff, right? But it. The eBPF based observability solutions are much more granular and much more better. So it lets you do yeah, more stuff. Yeah. Thank you. I see uh, yeah. uh, there already uh, hands up. Uh, let's see. Uh, is there any other question? Yeah. 
Oh, I, I also have some API 6 stickers if you want. So like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can, you can take them. <laughs>